Okay, so hello everybody, it's Sally here and it's Tuesday Teaching Tips and this is my second try because the first try I think I was on the, wi the wrong Wi-Fi booster which is why I kept losing the connection. So I'm going to start again. So I'm going to be talking today a little bit about my own personal experience of getting some students ready for the new ABRSM performance grades. And actually, I'm not going to start with the Lego, I'm going to start with the timeline because I like my children to be able to follow the timeline so they can see when the exam is and work back. So I have given them all, and the parents as well, you probably can't see that there, there we go, it's all backwards. But each week that they have left to prepare is written down here along with the different focus for each different week so that they know specifically. So last week was Lego practice. I'll tell you more about that in a moment. This week is all about learning to be a storyteller because, of course, they have to communicate. That's really important. Next week, they're going to be doing some recordings and self-assessment using criteria so that they become kind of the people who are able to improve themselves. Because it's their, it's their performance grade. It's not mine. You know, I, I'm not really fussed what mark they get as long as they have learnt something from the whole experience and they feel as though they have grown from the experience. That's what matters. Um, and the following week I'll be doing a performance workshop with, with the two of them together and then they'll play to each other and they'll give themselves, they'll give each other really lovely positive feedback, really important. And then we'll also do a trial recording and a sort of a mock exam, I suppose. So. I think that is a really useful thing because children really don't have any idea of time. You know, a week is a long time to a child. So trying to get them ready for a date in the future, they can't see that. They can't conceive of how long that is. This helps it all to fix down and they see the stages they're going to go through. So really, really useful. Um, as I say, last week was Lego week. And you might be thinking, how does Lego um, apply to piano. Well, actually, I know a lot of people who use Lego for all sorts of different learning um, potential and reasons. I was using it last week to help my students practice in a more um, uh, focused way. So when they have certain bars that are not as confident as other bars, I, I help them to identify it. So what I did was I recorded them playing and the, in the previous week, they rec they record. I recorded them playing their pieces. I didn't work on the pieces at all. I just got them to play to me. And then I thought about that during the week. And then last week, I said, OK, bar 24 to 28. Could you play that for me? And of course, that's four bars. So we took those four bars and we discussed. Um, I, I set out my four bits of Lego in a little line along the piano and the bars that they could play and were confident on, they, they kind of stayed there. The bars that they couldn't play, represented by the pieces of Lego, they got moved and then we were able to focus and use practice strategies such as the magic number three, plus one, all those sorts of things to help them really refine that. And that was their practice this week, was working on the Lego bars. And bless them, you know, they got their Lego out themselves and they'd obviously been doing it because they, they were both able to show me real improvement going on. Um, so Lego, really useful in just a really fun way of helping students to focus on their practice. And then this week is all about getting them to be storytellers because it's a really important part of, of being a pianist or being a musician is that you tell your story but you're not using words or even pictures of course you're using the music which is a much harder thing to get hold of really so I am using words and I am using pictures to help them stimulate their imagination so for example I've got one lad who's doing uh, the night journey girl it you know here's the piano I'll just play is full of mystery and suspense with all the seconds oh just scrummy piece scrummy piece and so i found a picture of a wood at night you know with a little bit of silvery moonlight and i shall also find another another picture of a 
a dark hill maybe with a, a dark hill a hill with with a rider uh, along it that's the picture i always have in my head because i want them to take ownership and they will choose or find another picture that's fine something to stimulate the imagination something to help them go beyond the notes that's really really important i think so they become a storyteller because of course the other thing I want to talk about today is the performance grade, those extra 30 marks, they get 30 marks obviously for each of the pieces, 120, um, and then there are 30 marks left. And I've actually made a small video, short video for my parents and, and, and their, their children to explain what this is all about. And I have very much taken from ABRSM and of course um, we had a wonderful webinar with them where uh, Mervyn took them, took us all through these three different areas that the performance as a whole, which is 30 marks, is, um, is really all about. And I don't know whether, I think you'll be able to see that. I'm just going to bring it out here. And I've just brought it um, into something that's a little bit more child friendly. So I'm hoping you can all see that the right way around. So you and your listener, you and your music and you and the instrument. And then I've gone into a bit more detail in in um, in each one about what that means for them, you know, how they communicate. Um, you know, do you throw your music on the floor? <laughs> Having played, do you just kind of throw it on the floor and get on with the next one? You know, do you wait a certain amount of time? How do you hold the suspense at the end? All these things are things I'm going to help be helping them to work on. Not easy. They won't do it perfectly. That's fine. That's part of the learning process, isn't it? It's not about doing a perfect performance grade. It's about learning through the experience, loving the music that they're playing and telling their stories with integrity, even if it does have some wrong notes going on. So that's me so far. I might pop in again on another Tuesday and just tell you a bit more about how it's going. But if you've got any questions, I'm just going to scroll down. I can see lots of people there. I can see hello, Angela. I can see um, Joe. Hi, Joe. Anastasia. And she's there. Hello, everybody. Diane. Hello there. And um, Elizabeth and um, Sean Ed and Christine is there as well. Welcome, everybody. And um, I don't know whether you've got pupils that you're entering for the ABRSM performance grades, but I think the preparation time is really important. I think giving them lots and lots of, of experience of the performance feel, yeah? Because when we come out of, of a just playing mode and go into performance mode, then our brain works differently. And as I often say to them, you know, when you go into performance mode, all your brain is doing is saying, there's a tiger around, I want to escape from this piano stool. And it's learning to be comfortable with that feeling of <gasps> of that fear yeah it's the fight and flight reaction that really kicks in help your students to become aware of that don't just put them in front of the camera and expect them to produce the goods first time all right i think i've witted on for quite long enough thank you all so much for for popping by and joining me for my tuesday teaching tips have a good afternoon or morning or evening wherever you are happy teaching take care bye bye